This and every episode of Wrecked Podcast is brought to you by Beeksy Exchange, an upcoming cryptocurrency exchange built in collaboration with One Market Data. Beeksy is bringing legacy finance speed, power, and sophistication to crypto for the first time. With 225,000 transactions per second per pair, comparable to NASDAQ, 15 order types on day one, with 25 order types on full rollout, and a dedicated customer support team, Beeksy is setting itself apart from the competition. Check out Beeksy today at Beeksy.com and pre-register today at Beeksy.com slash registration to get your free Beeksy exchange tokens. That's Beeksy.com, B-E-A-X-Y dot com. Craigslist has gotten harder to use since they took away the casual encounter section. Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchu alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host, Crypto Chamber. Chamber, how are you, buddy? Not too bad. Having a good day today. Mow the lawn for the first time of the year. And that's a... Wow. When you get old like me, that's a, that's a big deal. <laughs> that is a big deal. Are you a, are you a yard work guy? Yeah. Uh, I like to do yard work. I, I wasn't when I was a kid. I don't think anybody was. They're weirdos if they are. Um, but, yeah, as I get older, once you become, I don't know, I don't, there's something that happens uh, once you lo- start losing your hair and become a homo. <laughs> I think it's the, my loss of hair. Uh, if you, become, you become a man, and then you really just care about how fast people drive on your street and how good your lawn looks. <laughs> That's I perfect. get That's, so mad. You just described people. my father. Uh, I, I'm just, I think I'm describing everybody's father. <laughs> you, are, you just described my dad, uh, yes. Yeah, so I get very upset at people that drive fast on my street. And then I, yeah, I, I definitely gauge my uh, yard appearance to uh, everybody else's and judge everybody's. That's you know subpar. I just can't imagine myself ever being a yard work guy. My buddy is a super yard work guy, and like I, I just don't see it. And I still have my hair though, so maybe that's, that's right. You, you got a beautiful, lush. That's your yard. That's your yard. <laughs> yeah, that's the yard I care that. about. Look, the, the beard too. I got a lot of yard to take care of. Yeah, you it's got, actually you a little overgrown. I might get a foreclosure. You know <laughs> what? I think there's something there. I think there's a, a, a direct correlation between not being able to do your own hair and get mm-hmm. haircuts, yeah. and then and then making sure everything looks pretty in your front yard. This is like a Zen garden. <laughs> you know um, mine's more of a rock garden yeah 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 yours is <laughs> one big boulder <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah that's cool so yard work has started the weather's good i'm guessing then not bad it's not horrible that's good a little rainy hey, but that's okay i like how you can do your yard work during the day you got a nice gig going well you know i just sneak out i do a little extra work in the morning i miss and working from home buddy it's, that's yeah. that's where it's at Working. I still am flexible in the sense that, you know, I'm not working straight nine to five, but I'm traveling. So like, I'm not home, you know? No, you're definitely putting in some hours. Yeah. It sucks. I'm getting burnt out already. And, uh, so I, I'm, I'm a little, I have an accomplishment as well that we were just talking about that yes. I, I am proud of myself for, uh, for doing. So for a very long time, I have wanted to try to do some stand up comedy and, I get this bug like every year I get this bug to go actually do it and try it and I'm like become obsessed with it and then I never do it because I'm a giant pussy and so I now that I'm traveling for work I'm spending a lot of nights in hotels I'm like man I have no excuse I'm just gonna go find a place and go do it I could, if I suck or hate it I never have to go back there ever again blah 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 so I finally did it last night and it was really fun and I'm going to do it again and now I'm obsessed so uh, I am that was my so excited for you. You had messaged me yesterday. I am far too scared to do that. Uh, I love jokes. I love comedy. I love comedians. Um, but I'm definitely more. I you know I wish I could be the head writer for Saturday Night Live, not necessarily be on Saturday Night Live. You could be my head writer. <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, that would be great. So if we could work together and and make you the next king of comedy. 
that, that uh, I'm basically Seinfeld now. As long so. as you're not like jerking <laughs> off in front of chicks. Uh, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's literally something I've never done. So there you go. I you're think, good. There's I a spot available for you. Yeah, that's the next it. Louis. <laughs> that's it. So, um, but that was fun. I, I'd never done it before. I, um, you know, I was kind of peer pressured into actually doing it by a guy named EJ Edmonds, who is a comic and was there from out of town working on some new material. So shout out to him for, I'll never forget it. If I ever, you know, am able to do anything with doing stand up, uh, I will never forget that. So anyway, um, but that's it. Let's get into some crypto news. <laughs> So, Chamber, what do you got for us? We have lots of news here. Um, basically, all we're going to talk about today in the news section is Binance and what it means, what the implications are, who's saying what. Um, what do you What do you think about this whole situation? Um, I mean, I heard about it, you know, I would say late morning today. I don't know exactly when it happened. I don't know if it was overnight. Well, let's start here. Uh, yesterday at 3.06 p.m., so this is uh, May 7th, okay. have to perform, CZ uh, tweeted, have to perform some unscheduled server maintenance that will impact deposits and withdrawals for a couple hours. No need to FUD. Funds are hashtag SAFU. And then it said uh, trading will of- not be in. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, yes, Chamber. <laughs> Were they actually SAFU? <laughs> Funds were not exactly (laughs) SAFU, so uh, they were not, and it turns out that um, their, I guess, hot wallet was hacked um, by, you know, some hackers, and they were taken for 7,074 Bitcoin, which is about $40 million worth of Bitcoin, so that's a big fucking deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, that's a, that's that's a lot of cake. It's um, <laughs> so much cake. <laughs> that is forty, at least four million cakes, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of cakes. You know how many Mama Celeste pizzas that is? Oh, that's a... forty million. <laughs> that's forty million Mama Celeste pizzas for those that of is, you counting at home. That is tasty. It I'm is. getting hungry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I. Obviously, Twitter was ablaze this morning as soon as I woke up. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I'm already behind the eight ball in the news, I just kind of let it ride by and Same. pick up the you know pick up the pieces afterwards because mm-hmm. it was already a, it was already a tire fire by the time. It's kind of like um, playing double dutch, and you know people may have come in or gone out before you, but you just jump in right in the middle, no matter where it is. And, and, yeah. you're, and now you're playing the game. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> That's but, what this uh, is kind of like. Yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. Obviously, uh, CZ came out and wanted to like unwind oh, we'll, the oh, block. We'll get there. Oh, okay, we'll get right. there. <laughs> we'll get there. Because this is just unbelievably so, <laughs> crazy. But so, one of my, fa- I was going to say, one of the best pieces of news that I've read uh, was uh, self-proclaimed clown John McAfee offers cybersecurity expertise to CZ. Um, <laughs> this is a comedy bit in and of itself. <laughs> I love this. So Binance CEO Cheng Peng Zhao. I'm totally sure I got that right. <laughs> hey, you, I think you did. Did I? Okay, all right. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Uh, is receiving support from some of the most unlikely places. Uh, John McAfee has extended a helping hand to the uh, to the Binance chief in a tweet. McAfee, re- uh, re- <laughs> McAfee, I love how you just skipped the word you didn't know. <laughs> no, yeah, screw that. Wait, please you... say the word now. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst. I uh, did. I I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, it it's so all right. Great. The word is shit. Uh, the word is uh, <laughs> has extended a helping hand to the. Beleaguered by uh, yeah, that's it. Beleaguered. <laughs> uh, that was Thank so you for calling funny me out on to it. me. It the was word so was good. beleaguered. Uh, ding, ding, ding. I don't know what it means, and uh, I, uh, I assume do we do we have a definition on beleaguered? I'll get there. I by assume, the way, hashtag beleaguered. That yes, is, uh, is today's hashtag. I assume from the context it means you know in trouble of some right. sort. Yeah, I didn't. I just skipped over it. 
<laughs> so in a tweet, McAfee uh, uh, relied on a little bit of self-deprecation uh, to charm Zhao, uh, the latter of whom is learning quickly who his real-life friends are. McAfee, who is often the brunt of the jokes in the crypto industry, uh, realizes that 40 million worth of Bitcoin stolen is no joke. He stated, if I can help at all, please let me know. Underneath my clown suit is still one of the most experienced cybersecurity experts on the planet. I've done, uh, I've been doing this for 51 years. I am at your service. So, Do you think he you know could what? actually That's... provide any help though? I don't know. I think his cybersecurity was, you know, expertise was in the 90s. Right, that's like, what I mean. Like, I, I don't know what he's done in the last 20 years. That'd be like saying you're a cell phone expert when there was flip phones. Like to Motorola. <laughs> yeah, you know right. I mean? <laughs> like, you're the lead programmer on Snake. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, it was a nice gesture, I guess. Um, yeah, but, but I don't he... know. Do you think he's even serious, or do you think he's just trying to, like, poke fun? Um, I don't think he's trying to poke fun. I think he thinks he's serious, but I don't think there's actually anything he can do about it. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. in his head there's something he can help with, but I think in reality there's really nothing he can help with. Um, CZ did reply, I don't know what that emoji is. I want to say popcorn. That's an eggplant. That's not an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, would love to pick your brain about it. We'll DM you and arrange a time. Do we think a DM was sent? Uh, yeah, I bet you there was. You think so? Yeah, I bet you. I, I, I would say there probably was. Why not? Otherwise, why not? Why even respond? That's a good point. You know, if you're going to respond, you could have, he could have said, yeah, we got this. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? Hashtag Safu. Um, hashtag Beagard. Yeah, hashtag Beagard. <laughs> that was, that was so great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, sorry. the reason I, I brought it up, the reason I called you out on it was because I literally, laughed like and i wasn't sure if it came across on the recording <laughs> so i didn't want to like just laugh for no reason <laughs> you <laughs> like, gotta give the reason no uh, that is it was pretty funny. i would have done the same thing i think um 100 percent would have done the same thing but so we have more you know ccn news on this um and the, the impacts here so the $41 million Binance heist will trigger regulators, warns the Bitcoin billionaire bull. So this is um, Mike Novogratz, the CEO of digital assets merchant bank Galaxy Digital, basically is saying that the hacking suffered by the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, could invite more investor scrutiny, one, and it can only be bad for the industry. So he tweeted that um, in, re in reaction to the Binance hack. So uh, this, is, this is important, I think. The exchange lost these 7,074 Bitcoins was about 2% of its total Bitcoin holdings. And you were saying something about the hot wallet before. So this was actually all of the bitcoin that were stored mm. in the hot wallet so the entire hot wallet was hacked that so and, oh i see so and that included wallet, but that yes, was two percent of but that bitcoin. was two percent of their total gotcha. right so uh novogratz tweeted two percent is a lot when you're the world's largest crypto exchange there's no way to spin this as good it will certainly bring more scrutiny from regulators um which you know i think it's there's a point to be made there if we're sitting here you know talking waiting for these institutional money or these big investors to come in and all this and the world's biggest exchange not some rinky dink uh fly by night is getting hacked for 41 million and their entire right. hot wallet like that's a big deal like this could like, set I, I, set I us back or not like in the you know the financial markets is there a way to hack and steal from like apple stock like, i I guess you can't, right? Because it's all... Well, you would still be stealing from the exchanges. But you wouldn't be able to sell it, I guess, right? Um, probably not, because it's equity that can be right. tracked. They're not, you know, anonymous tokens to anonymous wallets. So, you know what I so mean? So my thought, though, is, you know, 10 years down the line, when, you know, hopefully, or maybe not hopefully, 
but when when there's a lot of money in the crypto market, what's stopping the place where you can buy Apple stock or whatever stock you want to then you, you could just trade your your cryptocurrencies there as well, and the need for a Binance wouldn't be there anymore. Well, that's what we talked about last week or last episode with uh, Fidelity, right? With Fidelity, so. so that's where these institutional investors are probably going to go. So you may still see retail investors using uh, things like Binance, um, mm-hmm. and you know institutional investors are going to trust Fidelity uh, right. because they've been trusted f- with their funds for you know years and years from like the big equity retail, side. Retail, but even like big retail um, can use Fidelity, r- right? That's what I'm saying. Well, actually. That's Can not they? that's yeah, not necessarily it? true at this point. So uh, right now it is a institutional vehicle only, I believe. Gotcha. So there's still need for these exchanges. So, so but can... but our friends at Bixi are supposedly going to get this security thing right, and their hot wallets and cold wallets and all of that just are going to, to be. Too. Yeah, I know. So this was perfect timing. I bet this I was Bixi was buying this. <laughs> Not Where saying, you... not saying, just yeah, saying. I'm just saying. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get the whereabouts of Franklin. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta get it. Uh, Franklin shows. Shout up out to with, Franklin. Eh? Franklin shows up with ten Rolexes at the yeah. Vixie launch party. <laughs> uh, no, we're just playing. But uh, they're supposed to get this security thing right, and like, so you know. It just kind of goes to show that not even the biggest exchanges are. Safu, um, you know, this says that they used a variety of techniques, including viruses and phishing, to get the um, user API and 2FA codes per statement released by the exchange. So this is how they got in. So they were getting user uh, privileged information and actually logging into other people's accounts, is what it sounds like, um, which is crazy. So now. The solution here, hold on, I'll actually I'll finish this here. So um, they actually relate this to, okay, Novogratz may be right because this same thing kind of happened already in Japan. So it says, you know, among the countries with highest cryptocurrency adoption rates, Japan has suffered more than its fair share of exchange hacks. Yeah, they've had two big ones. Yeah, as evidence of what Novogratz is afraid of, last year's hacking of CoinCheck unsurprisingly resulted in increased scrutiny and actions by the regulator, Japan's regulator financial services agency. Um, they proposed several measures aimed at protecting investors, including requiring exchanges to have reimbursement funds, which I believe Binance has. So they actually have a something called the Safu Fund, which came about from the last time they were hacked. So, um, and these funds obviously are used to compensate users in case their digital assets were stolen. So this is actually what the solution is from Binance. So Binance is covering the $41 million that had been stolen from users. So I guess kudos to Binance there, but uh, I don't know. Does that make it better? That's, that's frosting I mean, on how shit. many times can they, <laughs> you know, go into the fund to repay people before there's no more funds to repay I, people? Well, that's what I mean. It's crazy. So um, it's just kind of frosting on shit, no? It's like, okay, mm, thanks. That's I didn't, shit. <laughs> but, but, like, it doesn't solve the overall issue, right? No. You know what I mean? So... Um, last month, Reuters reported that crypto exchanges in Japan will be required to enhance the internal oversights of their cold wallets. Um, so, you know, this is definitely, there's precedent for increased regulation, basically. So, um, the, that regulators essentially, the biggest fear is that he, uh, from Novogratz is that they'll be regulators will be motivated to protect the needs of investors. Um, but Binance says, thanks for the support, CZ tweeted. Really appreciate it, but currently no need. We will cover the loss from the SAFU fund. There is enough. We are hurt, but not broke. Uh, we are working hard to resolve the issue so everyone can deposit and withdraw again. Um, this was in this was in response to Justin Sun saying that 
he will dep- he will personally deposit seven thousand Bitcoin worth of USDT, which is Tether, into Binance to buy BNB, BTC, TRX, and BTT if Binance agrees. No need to FUD. Funds are SEFU. So basically, uh, Justin's son saying, hey, I'll come to the rescue and pump your markets illegally. (laughs) Awesome. Right? (laughs) Oh, cool. But he still won't buy that guy a Tesla. I mean, that's ridiculous. Did, like, what I thought fuck? he did buy the guy a Tesla. Did, did he, he? Did he buy the guy a Tesla? I think finally, he did. I think it, I think he did eventually buy the guy a Tesla. He owes that guy a Tesla. Hundred percent. Um, buy me a yeah. Tesla. Yeah, I don't know. That Justin Sun is an uh, interesting character. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> have you ever Have you ever held Tron? Uh, not Not in my hands. No. No, have you had a bag of it though? Uh, well, I, I, the only Tron I've ever had was the airdropped Tron that got uh, dropped to me when I first was on Binance. Oh, I really? never, per- I've never purchased Tron. I think, yeah, I think they. Fi- what did that uh, work out to be? At the time, it was like worth nothing. It was five hundred TRX, so, but it was worth nothing, and then it went crazy. It was worth something, and I sold it. So, oh, good. Yeah, well, that's um, nice. I, but that's one bag I've never had. So Binance is going to cover this um, out of their SAFU fund, but this is after they took some potentially other uh, other potential actions into consideration here. So this is kind of what you were talking about um, earlier. So this headline from CCN says, Binance graciously decides not to nuke the Bitcoin blockchain. So... They, I can't even believe this was a fucking conversation. And you know what I'm talking about here? I know exactly what you're talking about. So I guess they decided or they had talked about potentially rolling back the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, I'm not 100% sure on how this works, um, but... It's. I can tell you it's probably a terrible idea. So uh, Binance CEO discussed the idea of potentially reorganizing the Bitcoin blockchain. In this vision, the 7,000 BTC recently stolen from the exchange would be redistributed to miners in the form of fees. So I guess the idea here is they still cover the users, but the people who stole the Bitcoin don't get away with it. So this would just be a... um, (laughs) I <laughs> just a random reward for the miners just to fuck the But uh, wouldn't I guess like fifty one percent of the miners need to agree to do that? Probably. I think that's exactly right. A, co- a coordinated effort with miners within a specific time frame could theoretically make it possible to empty the balances of the Binance hackers. And then after this blew up as such a terrible idea and everybody having an opinion on it, uh the Binance CEO C Z came out and said it wasn't my idea. <laughs> the idea didn't originate with Binance or CZ, and he wants to be clear on that. It started with Bitcoin Core contributor Jeremy Rubin, um, and Jeremy Rubin tweeted at him, if you reveal your private keys for the hacked coins or a subset of them, you can decentralizedly, at zero cost to you, coordinate a reorg to undo the theft. And then somebody named James Prestwich, who I don't know who that is, chimed oh, in. Yeah, of course. A big fan <laughs> of the show, James. <laughs> um, uh, he said, pretty much this. You can sign transactions bribing miners with the, uh, the transactions uh, that have been consumed. If the miners reorg to that chain, the theft will be undone. You could even offer something like 20% value to the miners. Um, uh, this is crazy to me. BitMEX yeah. research pointed out that the idea had been floated before in 2016 when Bitfinex was hacked to the tune of 120,000 BTC. And the genesis of the concept posits that the financial rewards of reorganizing the chain to thwart hackers were much higher than the incentives to maintain the blockchain, maintain the blockchain as it was. So that just seems like you're playing with total fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it... I don't know. It's crazy. It, you, what, like you said, everybody with mining equipment would have to cooperate. Right. And the idea of rewriting the blockchain to benefit one organization, you know. Very that, anti-Bitcoin. Very anti-Bitcoin. And it actually is kind of like what happened with the DAO hack where Ethereum right. reorganized 
their blockchain to restore stolen balances. So, right. you know, it kind of goes against everything that Bitcoin stands for. Um, this was so like what happened with Ethereum was a small a minority group, not a small group, a minority group of Ethereum miners uh, and users decided that immutability was more important than a single participant in the economy. And then Ethereum Classic, well, that's how Ethereum Classic was born. Um, I don't know. It's crazy. So the same thing would happen if they did this here. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So then he tweeted, he, he tweeted, uh, it turns out the reorg discussion is hotter than the incident itself. It's becoming <laughs> a little twisted. Uh, one, we did not initiate the idea. It came from a suggestion. Um, we did discuss it. Many people seem to, ev uh, to deem even that itself is wrong. I don't think. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, yes uh it just is going to i i don't know this is a crazy idea to me i think uh, there's some people saying that it's getting blown out of proportion but I, I, the fact that it's even floated is pretty much everything that it stands against and uh, like what about the fact that the market didn't really do anything today well it completely rebounded you know from I mean? yesterday like, like it, it it dropped to like what 55 something and it's right back yeah. where it started today, right. basically at fifty-eight. So there wasn't. Um, I mean, even fifty-five is not that huge of a of a uh, no, dip, not at all. How big the news was? No, I agree. And uh, like this is the third or or something biggest, you know, recent news that have been you know anti, right? Uh, I guess bad news that you would say, and it really hasn't had any effect, which is interesting. Overall. bottom things yeah <laughs> you know things yeah that's crazy <laughs> so yeah, that is crazy i mean this we did a, we spent a lot of time on this but this was uh i think this is a super important story for us to cover um because there's multiple things here at play including john mcafee <laughs> <laughs> Especially John McAfee. Yeah, right, um, exactly. And I think uh, out of all the major, I forget who said it, I want to say it was Nita Coin uh, tweeted out, um, or maybe it was Godson. It was one of our past guests um, that said, you know, just saying, Bitrix is the only big account that's never been hacked, um, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. And uh, Beeksy. And Beeksy. Technically not live <laughs> yet, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll put an asterisk on it. Yeah, right. Um, well. But yeah, I I think that's uh, it's pretty pretty interesting. You're a big Beak, uh, big uh, Bitrix lover these days, huh? I've converted my KuCoin love to Bitrix love. Yes. Until next week, where we'll until next week, and I'm friends. a big Beaksy lover. And until our <laughs> friends at Beaksy launch, which I might be going to the party. I might be going to the party. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just found out I will be in New York City that day, so I might stay over. The problem is I have to be in Syracuse the next morning, and I know myself. Ugh, How far is Syracuse from the city? Far enough, like three hours. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. At least, so I don't know. Yeah, you're gonna, gonna stay, get you're gonna get you're gonna get wrecked yourself if you go to that party. That's what I mean. Like I don't, and then I and you'll be a celebrity. Be like job. you know. It's not, this is not just your regular day. This is, you'll There's be something about me mortals. that is a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, people! I could show up and nobody knows who I am. I don't. I'm a, you just I'm have a to talk. Avatar. They'll recognize that. They'll recognize that golden voice. <laughs> the smooth, sultry voice of Bunchu. Yeah, Coming to you, you live be, from the Hilton throwing, in Pittsburgh. They'll be throwing women, <laughs> drugs, and drinks at you all night long. You won't and even be, Bitcoin. And Bitcoin. All that people yeah. are gonna make it rain Bitcoin on just Franklin with his seven thousand Bitcoin <laughs> and twelve Rolex watches. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. I'm so, I, now. I really want to go. You made it sound great. I know it's gonna be. It's you, gonna be you were not doing a good job of ta of talking me out of it. <laughs> no, uh, I, and I hate Syracuse. So uh, <laughs> me too. Syracuse yeah, no. is a. Uh, kind of a hole sorry for all of our we're, we're huge in syracuse so you just offended yeah all oh, i hope not all uh, 12 <laughs> listeners we have in syracuse you offended deeply <laughs> the greatest there syracuse are literally there. dozens um, of them <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it's uh i think you should go i think it would be funny um and talk to the people at consensus and say hey we see you got a lot of trash on your on your I'm dais just gonna i'm just gonna <laughs> live uh I'm, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, your podcast stage. Woof. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I'm pretty sure the the uh, Crypto Street guys are going to be at the Beaksy party. So I know. Dale's been tweeting about it a lot. I know. So I could go rub elbows with Dale. The big um, wigs? No, yeah, I could go Remember rub this elbows. face. <laughs> Yeah, remember, remember this face, <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, well, the, I, now I really want to go, and I just want to like live stream the whole thing. I feel like you should, uh, and you should live three, live stream the confrontation once you approach uh, uh, CoinDesk. <laughs> so you really yo, have my feelings, yo, CoinDesk. You know who I am? Yeah, I'm Don Bunchu, <laughs> coming to you live from Wrecked Podcast. This is what you're missing out on, CoinDesk. Wow. Fuckers. Nothing but gold. Nothing <laughs> yeah, but gold. Right. I always wanted to be the um, movie theater voice guy. Oh, that guy had a gig. I always wanted to be that guy. In a world where nothing else matters, one podcast will rule them all. <laughs> there's, a, there's a movie I watched. Uh, it, was like a, it, was, it wasn't like a documentary. It was like an actual, like, you know, an actual movie. And the, the premise was two rival voiceover guys and one was that guy <laughs> and then the other one was an up and coming guy that was try it was a really good movie i forget what it is but it was about that so if i remember i'll let find you know. it for me because yeah it, funny. it was really good it was enjoyable that's funny all right let's get to some of the stuff that we missed when we got our episode cut mm. off last <laughs> time we are gonna go into some would you rather now we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. All right, Chamber. We missed a couple of these and we can throw in some new ones. Let's do them and then we will tweet them tomorrow and get uh, other people's opinions. Um, let's go. You got one for me? Because I don't I, have the list up. So just I do have one. So I'm going to give you one that, we, that was cut out of the last episode. Okay. So the, the, would you rather have a golden voice or a silver tongue? Now, just, oh, wow. just to clarify, Golden Voice would be, you'd be one of the greatest singers of your generation, the songbird of your generation, if you will. I've been, I've uh, been called that before. I, I figured you had. <laughs> uh, or silver tongue, meaning your, your ability to smooth talk your way in and out of situations. Uh, it could be used for your stand-up career. Um, it could be used for, you know, political gains. Who knows? The, I think the possibilities are in this there. Uh, which one would you go with? Well, we, we, we established yesterday that, uh, or last time that I think, I think you would get more benefit from silver tongue because you, while the, uh, golden voice would take you straight to music stardom and, you know, probably wealth and riches and yep. all of that. I think I think you said it uh, the other day where I always I associate silver tongue with like smarts. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I agree. I think that I think it's more beneficial for life. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'm going with silver tongue. I'm going to have to go the other way. Uh, wow. I, yeah. I think having the golden voice, and maybe it's just because I can't sing uh, at the level I want to, um, I think the ability to make women swoon over me, uh, you know, maybe maybe I get a, 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 what do you call it when you get to stay in Vegas all the time? Uh, residency. A residency or, in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, you you know, don't even I, like I, Vegas. <laughs> I think if I was the king of Vegas, uh, I basically want to be, uh, I'm going to start my own new Rat Pack. Um, I think, yeah, I think you could get all of the things anyways with the voice. It doesn't necessarily mean you're dumb just because you got the golden voice. No, correct. I agree. But I think, I think you could, I think with a halfway, you know, an average intelligence and a golden voice would, could get you far in life. Plus, you know... I, People would write me. So I, I don't know if I have an ability to write songs at this point, but I'm I'm a big music guy, so I would like to have, uh, yeah, just a, a very high quality voice. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I don't know who who I would compare like like a Freddie Mercury level, I guess. Yeah, I would think be that's okay. probably the. Yeah, I mean that's I think a, I would like that. that's an iconic voice that will never die. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Whether you like, are you uh, are you you're a big music guy, obviously. 
Yeah, we will. We had talked last episode about how it got cut off in the basement tapes that uh, about the karaoke video I sent. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you you uh, you had sent us. Oh, that's true. So I say I have. I would say I have a B minus voice. Okay. Yeah. I will impress Which is, some it's people. Pretty, that's pretty good. Though. Like it's pretty good. Like I'm not saying like C's I would say get it's, degrees. It's, C's get degrees, B minuses. I don't know what they get, but they get, you know, a little bit more. Um, but like I would surprise people, you know, if we're sitting around a campfire, like I pull out my guitar, like I play guitar as well. Uh, I can I can impress the average Joe, if you will. Uh, but you, Which I am. You are an average Joe. Um, <laughs> you had sent me and Cynthia a video of you doing karaoke. And I think I woke up. I don't know if it was first thing in the morning when I was having my morning constitution. <laughs> oh, great! I'm glad I could uh, be there. <laughs> I was. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you're you're always with you're always close to me. Uh, I'm always with you. <laughs> and I, I see this video show up in in our in our feed, and I'm like, okay, it's gonna be it, you know it's gonna be Bunchu doing karaoke, and the karaoke is gonna be B minus. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's gonna be right. you know it'll be okay. Right. And I don't know what song you were singing. It was uh, it was like a uh, maybe like a country-ish song where you could I really... I think it was probably... It probably was Walking in Memphis. Walking in Memphis. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's what it that's was. That's one of my go-tos, yeah. Um, which is literally one of the hardest songs to sing because nobody knows the words to Walking in Memphis. Uh, I know every word. I, I can do. sing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Well, I'm going to go on a tangent here. What does he say? Uh, walking with my... something. Walking with my head, or walking my f- with my feet, ten yes. feet off of Beale, which is Beale off Street of, in Memphis. Off of Beale. See, I always yeah, thought so it was a beer? specific street. It is a okay. pronoun. I mean, a proper noun. It proper, is a proper noun. noun. Yes. Beale Street. Thank you Capital for clarifying B- that for me. Capital B E A L E, I believe. And it's so in, getting it's back a to the street story. in Memphis. Okay, that makes sense to me. Beale Street in Memphis. All right, I get it. Because I've I've never known what those lyrics. Where were. he is walking in. It all ties together. It mm. all ties together. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, so I watched this video, and I'm thinking, this guy's gonna be he's gonna be okay. He's gonna be, you know, uh, chamber level. Right. And you were significantly better than me. Uh, I would <laughs> I would put you at a A minus. Like wow. I, if you I if I were you. I would take Silver Tongue the, and the, keep your current and keep voice. Keep the current voice. Well, that was the other thing I was thinking too. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to gloat. You did it for me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but that's that's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, I could yeah. kind of do both if you I don't take lose the your voice, tongue. right? This, exactly. Game. So, um, all right. Yeah. I, so, fun fact: I once tried out for a singing sh- television show. Oh. Yeah, That's and I got amazing. I got to like the second or no, third you didn't stop round. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's good so, stuff. I uh, have not, and <laughs> uh, and probably will never. Well, uh, it was like one of those things. It's just like I don't know. I think it's the same thing with the stand up. It's like one of those things I always wanted to try, and if I never did it, I would always regret it. And I actually <laughs> surprised myself, and it was good. So. You know, I just am, I'm on this kick where like I'm gonna try things I've never done before because I'm you're, getting you're old. You're a consummate my, showman. Well, my, yeah, <laughs> I am, and I, like that's why I want to do the podcast. I've always wanted to do stuff like this and blah blah blah. I'm an I'm an entertainer, <laughs> I, I like guess. Um, all right, I got one for you. All right, hit me. Would you rather go back to age five with everything you know now, or everything you or or stay how you are now? but know everything your future self will ever learn. Okay. Do you, do you understand question. the question? Yeah. Can I learn more things? Do I basically relive life from five? Yeah, it sounds Starting... like it, but you also know everything you know now. So it sounds like you're just going to start with a, a massive head start. Like, you know, everything you know now, plus obviously whatever you want to learn. You're not just like stunted of learning for the rest of your life. I would say go back but to like five. if you know now, so like if you stay now and you can, you basically can tell the future. Right. No, I think I go back. Honestly, I, I'm not a big, uh, I think uh, just my, just my belief system. 
uh, leads me to believe that once you're dead, you're dead. So if I can roll back the clock and take another kick at the can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, get some extra mileage on the old life. Uh, that would be okay too. Um, so I would, I would, I think I'd roll it back to five. Interesting. But I would argue that if you know everything you'll ever know right now, you could take that, you could maximize the rest of your life. And that is true. That's a good point. Live, live, starting now, live in a, in a way that you probably would never be able I to would, do. I would posit you this question. Uh, how much more are you going to learn? Well, but so, well, I mean, it it can be anything. It can be even if it's just, oh, I know who won the Super Bowl. I know who wins the Super Bowl in, okay. in twenty fifty. Right. That makes more sense. Uh, you know, like then I can kind of make my own life. Like even because it, it's no, it says no. Everything your future self will learn. So like, I, I mean, current events is learning stuff. You know. Okay. So I, I right. that's how I interpreted it. Okay. So like, I see. You can basically. So I'll know if Apple is going to be. Right, uh, you know, a million dollars a share in 2020 or 2050, and right. I could, you know, I'll know the price of Bitcoin. You know what I mean? It's more importantly, so yeah. I can decide. <laughs> right. So now, if you're five, and you know right now that Bitcoin. the price of Bitcoin, yeah, but the price of Bitcoin is still the price of Bitcoin. Do I go back and, to, and I don't go back in time. I don't go back to like 19. No, you don't go back in time. Uh. You go back to age five, so you just know, age so five now you have no ability. You have no ability to do anything financially at age five. Hmm. You just know I that Bitcoin is the future. Yeah, I don't know. Something about reliving my teen years would be fun. Uh. <laughs> no, I I get it. I I mean I think that's the crux of it. Is would you rather have the the extra years or the extra knowledge? Is really what it comes down to. Right. And you're you're going years. I'm going years. I'm going years. I think. I feel. Like. I, I probably I, should because I'll be dead in two. But with your rock star <laughs> lifestyle, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like <laughs> it's. I live fast and hard. That's it. Uh, that's speaking funny. of living fast and hard, did you finally finish the Saturday Night Live episode? I did. And it was very good. Um, we were we were chatting. Um, I thought the best sketch. And by the way, uh, I don't know if you're like me. Do you correct people when they say skits? I'm like I'm like the worst think, person. For I don't think I've heard someone call it that in a very long time. Oh, it's so probably, upsetting to me. It would probably annoy me. I don't think I would correct them though. It's sketches, and if, so for you know, for anybody out there. <laughs> yeah, you're not a skit comic. You're a sketch yeah, comic. sketch comic. Okay, they right. they make sketches on Saturday Night Live, not fucking skits. All right, right. Uh, so, mom, I'm talking to you if you're listening. <laughs> I'm just joking, Mom. Uh, I love you. Uh, but yes, I did. My favorite sketch was the um, <laughs> where Adam Sandler was the uh, Italian tours uh, commercial guy, where he's basically saying, um, you know, just because you go to Italy uh, for your holiday doesn't necessarily guarantee you're going to be happy. If you're <laughs> unhappy at home, if you're, uh, you're, you're still, still going to be that unhappy, unhappy person when you go out. Huh? It was really, Italy. really good. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that one, was really funny. <laughs> and then obviously the Chris Farley song at the end yeah, uh, that got was me hard. a tearjerker. It was, uh, it, was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah. I was a big Chris Farley fan. I, Same. I was really, uh, I was really hurt uh, like back in the day when Chris Farley died, like that one took the wind out of my sails as a kid. Adam Sandler still ain't over it. I know. Well, <laughs> well the other thing too, the other thing besides uh, besides skits and sketches, uh, the other thing that really you know grinds my gears is the ascension of what the hell's his name now. I call I I don't even rec recognize him as a human being, but he Pete is Davidson. the. Pardon me. Pete Davidson. No, not Peter. Peter Davidson's okay. Um, no, um, the fat guy that's in all the Adam Sandler movies now. Uh, Fake Kevin Farley. James. Yes. Kevin James. Kevin James. <laughs> Fuck Kevin James, okay? Uh, wow. On the wow. record. On the First record. First of all, Doug Heffernan. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Listen here. There is a direct correlation between the death of Chris Farley and the rise of his career. Okay, and in the Chris Farley song, so I've been saying this for years. I've been saying this for years. Um, started ramping up with the uh, the Adam Sandler movies with all of his buddies. Uh, they made mm -hmm. like three of them. I forget what they're called. Grown ups. Uh, grown ups. And I said, well, it should be. You know, it's it's Chris Rock, it's Dave Spade, and it's Kevin James. But Kevin James should be Chris Farley. Right. And in his song, yeah, he says he, he says at the end. 
you know, we should be making grown-ups for. And I look at my wife every time and I'm like, you goddamn right they should be making grown-ups for Chris Farley. Because <laughs> Kevin James should not be in any of those movies. Well, the real, replacement. the real truth is they shouldn't have made grown-ups one. But that's well, a fair enough. Story. Fair enough. <laughs> well, you know what? Good on Adam Sandler. The guy has a boatload of money, wants to make movies with his friends. Yeah, we're going to shoot in Hawaii. Yeah. You guys are going to get paid. We're going to play hey, basketball. And all. Good Live for him. Your life. Yeah. I watch every single, I think I've seen every single Adam Sandler movie wow, on the soccer really? forum. Yeah, I'll watch the horrible ones. Uh, it's okay. I don't mind. Uh, but, uh, you know, good on him. Make movies. Have your friends in it. <laughs> Pay them boatloads of money. Uh, all right, are we done here? Fuck Kevin James. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're done. Let's let's get out of here. Um, all right. Any final any final things you want to talk about? Is there anything we missed from the closing last time that we we need to say? Other um, than the usual, did we get those guys their shout outs last time? Yeah, we got everybody in. All the okay. important stuff was in. Okay, good. We, yeah, I think we just missed a couple of the would you rather's. That's about it. Cool. Well, sounds like we're we're good then. I think we got it um, all. What's that? Because I think we got everything in. <laughs> so somebody, it's funny, just as you said that, somebody replied to our uh, tweet from the other day and said, so no AC or no internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that I guess the, we got to put it in. All right, let's all right, do it. So, all right, which, which one would you? So no AC or no internet. Um, 100% no internet. Or sorry, no AC. So the question was, would you rather no air conditioning, no heating, or no internet, right? That was the options? Yes. Okay, so I would go, I would stick with internet because internet is my favorite thing in the whole wide world uh, and my ability to prove people wrong uh, in a conversational setting at any point on my cell phone, uh, the internet allows me to do that and it's my favorite thing in the whole wide world and I would not give that up for anything. I I said I said I would rather choose no internet. I would I I sweat when I peel fruit. So <laughs> air, air condition is a very very important part of my life. It's my second best friend, I think, um after food. <laughs> and um those the so those things are needed for me. I need air condition. Um so I'm going no internet, which I know that means that means no podcast, uh no chamber. I wouldn't know you otherwise, right. but I'm, I'm not I'm uh, not that it, memorable. It's, <laughs> it's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. Although I did ask you the follow-up question, I forgot. So the follow-up question to that was, because you, you mentioned uh, your ability to prove people wrong, was the other would you rather that we did was um, no search engine or no social media? No social media. I would give up, I would give up it all. I would give it all up just to keep my search engine. I don't know, man. You're pretty Twitter obsessed. I, I am. But I'm more... The joy that I, I get. I feel like you could outsource the, the search engine. <laughs> what, you're going to go to a fucking encyclopedia again? No, thank no, like, you. No, like with your Twitter following. Be like, so you got to think outside the box. You can get your Twitter uh, following to Google shit for you. <laughs> I got to get it up because the response time would probably be slow. That's, that's true. You know what you I mean? Need it. If you're <laughs> I get, talking like, about instant, yeah, you need. Uh, you like need, 100K. Like, right, at least to get every response immediately when you want it. Yeah. Right, like pretty immediate. You know, I would give it a three-minute, you know what I mean? A three-minute delay. But, yeah, no, I, I, I need that ability to find answers right away. <laughs> I, I I would probably – I'd probably go no social media also because um, I how much love social media. media. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I I don't use a ton of social media now. I use Twitter all the time, and that's pretty much it. Twitter and Telegram are the two things that I use. Right. Like, I'm not a, a big Facebook guy. I'm not a. I'm definitely Instagram. not a big Instagram guy. Right, um, you know, uh, that's about it. Like, what else is there? I feel Twitter's the smart people's. Uh, social media. <laughs> easy. <laughs> no, but easy. When, when you're talking, so what, what? Where are the smart people? I on Facebook. I've or been asking myself that my entire maybe just, life. Maybe they're just the smart people. <laughs> I've uh, been like, I, you know, now this is going to sound really terrible, but 
you know, we're probably smarter than 90% of the entire population. <laughs> yeah, I know, no doubt. Yeah, I agree. And, so, yeah, maybe know. 85, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, all right, maybe like 70, but still. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, realistically, probably like 70, but... We're definitely top tier, though. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I think so. It, yeah. Not, no, but it's not a, that's not a, uh, you know, a boast as it is an indictment on how many people other are. people. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Like we're, we're that by default. So. Right, exactly. Anyway. I know, but I think, I, you know, most of. Hashtag beleaguered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I bet you 70 other, I bet you most people don't know what that word means. I mean, yeah, it's, I, I agree. I could probably figure it out in context, but. I don't know if I would be able to get a proper definition off the cuff. <laughs> All right. Now we're just fucking rambling. <laughs> we're right. getting, Let's close we're it getting off. out of here for real. Anyway, follow us on Twitter because we need our social media at wrecked underscore podcast on Telegram. Join our Telegram group t.me slash wrecked underscore podcast. Um, that's, you know, that's where we're at on Instagram. If you're on there, wrecked podcast uh, on Facebook, if you're still on there, uh, wrecked podcast, you know. That's about it. Check out our merch. We're they're flying like hotcakes. Actually, we had some people tweet uh, some things yep. they were wearing today, which is pretty cool. And that's about it. We'll be back next week uh, on Mother's Day with a father, <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Until then, do not get wrecked. And that is financial advice. <laughs>